Yo, what's up? It's your boy Dennis Ngango and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm chilling with an award-winning rapper with an infectious personality. It's none other than Yasta CBT. Yes, indeed. I'm, I'm liking that you remember CBT, right? No, i That's the most crucial, crucial part of my name is CBT. Speaking of CBT, let's talk about your first love, Kiptonian rap, Kiptonian yes, hip-hop. Let's yes, talk sir. about it. We were we were blessed to be the the cradle yeah. of, of South African hip hop. You know, I think that uh, prophets of the city and uh, Black Noise, dating as far back as like the late seventies, early eighties, mm. adopted hip hop in South Africa. You know, from the b boy to the graffiti to the DJing to the MCing, which came last for them. You know, so they were really about the culture, yeah. the actual culture that people speak of when they speak of hip hop culture, the five elements of hip hop, and uh, the knowledge, which being the fifth element, is something that you can only achieve if you are self conscious and you are yeah, aware. Sure. You know what I mean? You can't do hip hop if you don't know who you are, and if you don't know who you speak to, if you don't know what you're speaking about, also addressing the issues, addressing the environment and the landscape. You know, so I mean, Cape Town hip hop has stayed true to that because if you look at the rappers even now in Cape Town, they're still spreading that message. Yeah. They're still talking about, you know, uh, what's going on in the disadvantaged areas. They're still no, talking sure. about the struggles. You know? Speaking of the struggles, when was that moment that you realized there was a problem with society? So, nobody was asking that question before. You know, at, at a very young age, I think when I started noticing differences between also the schools, because the school I went to, there was white kids in that school and there was black kids as well. Whereas the schools my friends went to, there was just colored black kids at that school. Yeah. Understand? So when we would come home and obviously play outside and exchange, you know, like your daily experiences, I'd noticed that the things that went on at their school, it didn't happen at my school. Yeah. You know? And this was when I was coming home to the neighborhood. You know, so these were the guys that I was spending most of my time with. And sometimes I'd even be teased and ridiculed for the fact that I was going to school, or the fact that I was finishing my homework, mm. or the fact that I was, like, you know, associating even with white people. That's something that they would actually, you know, they made me feel bad about that. Yeah. So, I think from that age I started noticing that there's some sort of a difference in society. I didn't exactly know what it was, mm. but I just knew that we're not all living the same life and we're not all being treated equally. You know? Taking that into perspective and seeing the man that you've become, what do you think about you resonate so much with your listeners and the people that you interact with? Because time and time again, yeah. when I've seen your interviews, when I've spoken to K Faith, even when I've spoken to random, K -Faith. K -Faith. <laughs> even when I've spoken to random rugby players from Stellenbosch, every time they would say that their favorite artist is you, and when they would say it, they would smile. Yeah. So, what do you think about you and who you are and yeah. how you carry yourself yeah. and where you're from resonates with your audience? You know, I think that the, the public, the public is not stupid, you know, they're not uneducated. They have the doctors, they have thoughts, you know what I mean? And because of that, they are able to tell when something is honest and something is true and when something is false, you know? So because a lot of the promises they've been made by, you know, whether it be the government, whether it be the police, whether it be the ministers or, or anyone in power, a lot of those promises haven't been fulfilled. Yeah, and then you get someone like me, for example, who is also somewhat of a speaker, also somewhat of a you know a role model, unquote. You know, if I could say that. And when I deliver my speech, when I deliver my message, nine out of ten is the truth. Nine out of ten is honest. Nine out of ten is relatable. And this is somebody who's coming from the same place as you, and because of that, you believe in me more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm telling a story that you live. I'm just reporting the story. And because you know that these other guys who have higher positions in life are from the same place as you but didn't fulfill that obligation and are not actually telling your story and are not actually representing you in these you know, major boardrooms that they sit yeah. in, because of that they've lost faith in those people and gained faith in me. Mm. So when I come on the stage, it's like they're listening to one of their own. Yeah. You know, someone that they elected. Not the... Um, you know, not an official in government. I'm somebody that elected from the street, you know, street politics. And that's what I represent. And they're still supporting you. No doubt. I think just to wrap it up, thank you for being a voice to people who are voiceless. You know? No doubt, man. It's, it's, and continue. It's not always easy. I will say, like, it's not a breeze doing this because I miss out on a lot of opportunities being that 
I don't want to sell something that's just commercially viable for five minutes. Mm. I want to sell something that's going to stay timeless forever. And because of that, like I said, I miss out on some opportunities because people tend to steer away from this message that I'm trying to bring across. But I just want them to know that um, in Cape Town, there are people out there with talent and as much talent as what you've been seeing already. And all they want is a chance, you know, and I've been given a chance, and with my chance, I'm going to be blessing others with more chances. So get used to seeing us, get used to hearing us. Cap start for life. Salud. Amen. You heard it here first. Dance the CPT, Dennis and Gango. This is Defining Dennis. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let us know your thoughts. Follow him on social media. Now I'm looking there on top of the screen. <laughs> you see, this is the lens, but that's the screen there on top. That's a mistake people make when they take selfies, bro. I always be looking at the goddamn screen. Man. But anyways, I think this is a quiet way to exit. Let me see. Hey. <laughs> bro, what did I tell you what we do in the jaw there, man, bro? Here we go, boss. Here we go, boss. Stick it in the chum in my brass. I go, boss. Uh uh, we don't turn up. Ah. Here we go, boss. Stick it in the chum in my brass. I go, boss. Here we go, boss. There they go, boss. See me go, boss. Here we go, boss. Uh uh, we don't turn up. Ah. Here we go, boss. Stick it in the chum in my brass. I go, boss.